All right, so what we're going to be looking at here is the cell cycle, where a cell spends most of its time. Now, what I'm drawing here is kind of a rudimentary pie chart, if you want to copy this down as well. I've broken it up into several sections, and as you can see, the longest one right here is called interphase. This is where a cell spends most of its time, where it's living out its life, essentially. Interphase is broken up into three separate sections, G1, S, and G2. We'll go into those a little bit more at a later time. And then we have that last section, which I'm drawing in green. That is part of my mitosis. P, M, A, and T. P, prophase, M, metaphase, A, anaphase, and T, telophase. Now this is collectively called the mitosis phase of the cell cycle. This is the part where the cell is actually dividing. As you can see, it only spends a small amount of time actually dividing. So here's our key, P, prophase, M, metaphase, A, anaphase, T, and telophase. Those are all part of mitosis, which is the smallest section of the entire cell cycle. And then the other phase, G1, S, and G2, collectively those will make up interphase, which is the vast majority of where the cell spends its time. And that G1 stands for gap 1, because if you were looking at a cell underneath a microscope, this is a gap of time where it doesn't see much is going on. S, there's this big flurry of activity where it is synthesizing more DNA. And then again, we get to G2, which is going to be another gap where it almost seems like nothing much was actually happening. So pause right here, make sure you copy down the cell cycle, and you note that it spends only a small fraction of time actually dividing, and the rest of time, it's living out its life. All right, so we're going to talk about the phases of mitosis, and we're going to start with interphase, which isn't actually part of mitosis. It's just uh, where the cell actually spends most of its time. So I'm drawing a cell right here in interphase, and you can see I have the cell, I have the nucleus, which is visible, and then I have the chromosomes inside. And if you remember, in this case right here, the chromosomes aren't really visible. They're not thicken. In this case right here, they are almost in that unwound, almost ball of string. So this is called chromatin right here. So in interphase, this is where uh, a cell is kind of living its life. Whatever that kind of cell that is, that's what it's doing its job. It's going to spend most of its life in interphase. And that's going to be divided up into three separate parts, G1, S, and G2. And uh, right now you should pause the video, make sure you copy this down, and have all the information. All right, so now we're going to talk about prophase, which is the first actual phase of mitosis where the cell actually starts to divide. So here I'm drawing the cell, of course the nucleus, but you're going to notice that the nucleus looks a little bit different. There are holes in it. The nucleus is actually starting to break down as the cell is preparing to divide. Again, in the middle, like with the nucleus, I find the chromosomes, but in this case here, you're going to notice that the chromosomes are starting to disappear, so I'm just kind of erasing a little bit there. And instead they're starting to thicken up and form the familiar X shape that we are uh, more familiar with for chromosomes. Now I have these guys here, these are the centrioles, these are what I call the chromosome cowboys. They are the ones that are actually going to be uh, taking care of moving around the chromosomes. And they do that with spindle fibers. Spindle fibers are these long fibers that emerge from the centrioles and they're going to attach to the middle right there, the middle of my chromosomes, and they're going to move them around. So if they're the chromosome cowboys, these are their lasso, that is what they're actually lassoing. So the main events that happen in prophase, the centrioles are going to move to opposite sides of the cell and produce spindle fibers. The nucleus and the nucleolus will disappear. I didn't have those in here. And you can start to see those chromosomes become visible and attach to the spindle fibers at the centromere. So in the middle of the chromosome there, that is where those spindle fibers are actually attaching to. And again, right here is a good time to pause and make sure you copy all this information down. All right, so now we're going to talk about metaphase, which is the next phase of mitosis. Metaphase is probably the easiest one in the entire process to uh, recognize. And the way you can recognize that is because you see that the chromosomes are lined up right along the middle or the equator of the cell. I guess it's kind of an equator if you tilt your head or you're weighing down when you watch this, or your computers, but whatever. Anyways, metaphase, you can see that the chromosomes are lined up along the middle, and of course the centrioles are producing those spindle fibers. And notice that they are, all of them, connecting right at the very middle of the chromosome. That is called the centromere again. Main events of metaphase, chromosomes line up along the equator. They're lined up there because they're going to be divided in half. And again, just want you to note that the spindle fibers are attached to the chromosomes at the middle 
of the chromosome, the part of it called the centrum. All right, so we're going to pause right here so you have a chance to uh, copy down all the information. Make sure you have all of that. All right, now we're going to talk about anaphase, which is our next phase of mitosis. First off, you're going to notice that the cell is starting to lengthen. It's no longer a circle. Not that with my drawing it ever was a circle, but it's less circle-y now. It's more oval-y now. In this case right here, the cell is starting to lengthen because in this case right here, the cell is being pulled apart by our centrioles. Remember, the centrioles are going to be pulling apart those chromosomes, and you'll notice now they used to look like an X, now they kind of look like a V. That's because it is half of the X. The other half, of course, would be right there, but it was pulled across to the other side. So here you can see there's the other half of it. And of course, they were pulled by those spindle fibers emerging from the centrioles. So anaphase, the cell is starting to lengthen because they're being pulled apart. So the chromosomes are pulled to opposite sides of the cell by the centrioles and the spindle fibers. Right here, make sure you pause and you copy down all of the information before we go on. All right, now we're going to talk about telophase, which is our last phase of mitosis. And you'll notice right now that it's no longer a circle, or circle or whatever. It's starting to become two circles. That cell is starting to pinch together. Right here, it is pinching in there, and it's starting to become two different cells. Now, I am redrawing something I haven't drawn in a while. I'm drawing in the nucleus, because in this case right here, the nucleus is starting to reform. Remember that it broke down a couple of phases ago. Nucleus is starting to reform. There's my chromosomes, which I pulled before, but you'll notice that I'm erasing part of them because they are starting to unwind. They are starting to unravel, and of course, they're starting to become chromatin again. There, again, I still have my centrioles. They still are there, but again, I'm going to be erasing them because they are starting to pack up. Think of them as movers. Once the movers get you into your new house, either here or there, it's generally weird if the movers stick around. More often than not, it's like, well, thanks for moving all the stuff. Um, goodbye. It'd be kind of weird if they stuck around. So in this case, these movers, these cowboys that split it all up, it's time for them to ride off into the sunset. So the centrioles are starting to break down. Our ventotelophase, the centrioles and spindle fibers disappear. My nucleus and the nucleolus are going to reappear. I'm not drawing the nucleolus, just for clarity. Those chromosomes unravel and become invisible. They become that chromatin again. Now, I'd also encourage you... Uh, not only to pause here and copy down the information, but compare it to prophase. Telophase and prophase are kind of the opposites. In prophase, the centrioles and spindle fibers appeared, which means in telophase, they disappeared. In prophase, the nucleus and nucleolus uh, uh, disappeared, which means they reappear here. Here, the chromosomes unravel and become invisible. In prophase, they raveled up and they became visible. Prophase and telophase are kind of opposites. All right, now we're going to be looking at our final phase of mitosis. It's really kind of part of uh, telophase, but you can see here the cell has not only almost entirely pinched together, it's almost completely done. My nucleus is completely there. It's not reappearing. It's appeared, and the chromosomes have completely unraveled and become chromatin. They're not on their way to doing that. So the main events of cytokinesis, cells are going to pinch and split apart, and it becomes two daughter cells. Make sure you pause and you complete uh, all of your information being copied right here. The end.